So, are you registered to be an organ or tissue donor? Actually, no, I'm not. Can I ask you why? Why would I? I was born with these organs, so I'm going to die with these organs. This is my son, Maurice. He was my firstborn. They always said that he was going to make it big in baseball. And they told me he had been shot in the head. And the doctor told me that he was brain dead. My baby was laying there. His face or nothing was swollen. He was just laying there looking like he was in perfect peace. I didn't know what brain dead was. The doctor came over there. He said, Arlinda, your son's vital organs are just great. Will you consider donating his organs? And I immediately got an attitude because he didn't explain to me what donating the organs would do for other people. He didn't explain to me that my son could live on in somebody else's body. I felt like he just want to kill Maurice. Hmm. African Americans suffer from a number of health disparities in disproportionate numbers, high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes. The end result of this is that left untreated, these health challenges can cause one to need a life-saving transplant. And if you were to need a life-saving transplant, chances are you would wait many, many years for your gift of life. If you did not get your gift in time, you would die waiting. We need to change the narrative. It gets really deep when I think about it, like just us and healthcare in general. Like this is bigger. The organ, tissue, and eye donation is a piece, but it's just really the cultural piece of our love-hate relationship with healthcare, hospitals, doctors, that goes back to that lack of information and then trust. We don't trust. Because there's a lot of trust that comes with, I'm waiting, I'm a trust that you're gonna give me this heart. I trusted y'all, but it's so culturally deep. Coming into a community that said, we'll never be organ donors. Oh no, we don't do that. When we die, they go in the ground. We don't trust the process. We had to look at, if I'm not a superstar, I'm not an athlete, I don't have lots of money, will I be treated fairly on the list? And those are the reasons that African Americans in our minority communities was never donors. People feel if they register to be a donor and if they're involved in the automobile accident and the first responders arrive on the scene, they think that we're more concerned with their organs. That is, we're not gonna give them the best care possible. Maybe we'll hold back because we know someone who needs a heart or a lung or a kidney, but that is so far from the truth. When emergency responders arrive on the scene, me being one, the only thing that we are thinking about is saving that life. We never look at a driver's license. We never know that they're a donor. That information is not shared until way down the road. People say sometime to me in the community, I cannot be an organ donor because I have diabetes. I says, no, you possibly could not be concerning your kidneys, but you have a heart, you have lungs, you have skin, you have bone and tissue. Organ and tissue donation is incredibly vital to the African-American community. Now, we don't actually do transplantation in our organization, but we serve a very vital role on both sides of that continuum. On the donor side, and as a trauma center, some of those, uh, uh, those injuries may be life-ending, but we really work with those families at that point in time to make sure that they understand the importance of uh, honoring the life of their loved one, and we try to help them to realize that there are ways that they can actually extend that, that gift of life and celebrate that gift of life if they are a viable organ donor by actually sharing that organ to other members of the community, particularly in the African-American community. We are well aware that there are a significantly greater number of African-Americans who need organs than the organ donors themselves. I've been on a transplant list for the last uh, four years. Uh, I was diagnosed with uh, chronic kidney disease. 
I thought that uh, if I was fortunate enough to receive a kidney or receive a donation, that that would be something monumental because that's a gift of life. But in the interim, I thought that it would be to my advantage to think in terms of more, what could I do to give back? I had a kind of like a paradox. It was kind of like a situation where my business is actually in the medical transportation. It ended up with me actually transporting people that go to dialysis. And um, it turned out to be almost of a mission then because I got a chance to actually see what are some of the conditions other than my own that leads to something like this, or even how do you get the awareness out to talk about a transplant? There's some type of lag there, and that lag is always get down to education and information. How do you get that message out? There is a challenge with us mobilizing consistently. Like we have seen um, our folks uh, mobilize um, in recent times um, with some of the police brutality situations across the country, we mobilize. I mean, I'm unsure what it will take for us to mobilize in the same way um, around this really important issue that affects our community. I mean, how do we mobilize um, around um, eye, organ, and tissue transplantation? There's some people I work with in these communities in these rural areas, they don't even have a cell phone. I don't want to bypass them. I want to love on them. I want to tell them, even with your challenges in life, you can still be a hero and you can still give the gift of life. The current narrative is people are misinformed or people don't care or culturally you've been told it's a bad thing. And the fact is when you say no, to registering to be a donor, there's a good chance that people die. The reality is in our community alone, there are over 10,000 patients waiting on a second chance, many of whom are African-Americans. This fuels my commitment to closing the donation gap, knowing that one decision can impact eight lives. As a pediatric transplant surgeon, the thought that there are children dying on a wait list is just um, unacceptable to me. One of the things that, that I think about, you know, sort of as I wake up in the morning, my, my first thoughts and my last thoughts of the day are, there's still a lot of great work to do. And a lot of that, that great work involves eliminating this list and having a zero tolerance for a wait list. Let's talk about their health. Because you know your health is your wealth. You can't buy that. And when I begin to talk to these minority faith-based leaders, and they would tell me what they would hear from their parishioners, heart disease, that awful diabetes. And a lot of people in the African-American community feel like it's a generational curse. And it does not have to be. The healthcare initiative within the African-American community has lingered to a degree, and a lot of that has just been driven by the lack of education on caring for ourselves. You gotta remember, you got kids out here now that are that could be four, five, or six that are also giving their grandparents injection shots for diabetes. So it's not, there's no such thing that they don't understand, they know. But if you gave them the talking points or brought them in and, and gave them an incentive to understand this, they would be the vehicle to help us get it because they're in the home and they dealing with the, and they can visually see what some of these habits are. We've somehow accepted this as our fate, you know, that diabetes and hypertension is just what happens to black people. The African-American community has not fully embraced the fact that these are diseases that are curable. As I think about the numbers of us who are on dialysis or who need heart transplants, this is another place where we need to change the narrative and really step up and, and do it now so that we can begin to affect positive change and, and healing in our community. But we have to be activists. You can actually do things today that are outside of the healthcare space to promote your health. We're talking about things like eating healthily, having an active lifestyle, and prevent the cycle of chronic conditions that lead to uh, the need to have organs. We can actually stop that cycle. My message to the African-American community would be to take power of your own healthcare. 
You, you control these things. You have to make a change. If you don't make a change, then that's why we have this mindset that, oh, we're just gonna live with diabetes. We're just gonna live with hypertension. No, we are not. We're gonna live healthier lifestyles so we can make healthy decisions and we can make a decision about being organ, eye, and tissues donors at the end of our lives because if we take care of this body now, it will take care of us later, but it can also take care of you. When we transition out of this world, we can share those organs with other individuals in our community. So let's think about it. It all ties together because we are one large community. And so we need to educate our community, our people, so we can help our people, so we can save our people. We are the ones that are dying because people are not registering to be donors. People right now can talk to your loved ones, make that decision to be an organ donor, to be a tissue donor, and talk about what that means. It's important that we have those conversations with our family members, with our loved ones, with our healthcare providers to say, what is it that I can do to provide this benefit to my family and to my community members? And this is the time to begin to have the conversation. Don't wait till you're at the bedside, that's not the place. Have the conversation prior before that. It makes it so much easier on your family, that decision to say at the end of my life, I will share the gift of life with others for them to live. Because donation is not in anyone's culture. It is a learned behavior. It is critical to begin thinking differently in the African-American community about organ and tissue donation. Consider what your legacy will be. If the answer is yes, know that your decision to be a donor gives hope to thousands of patients waiting for a second chance. And sometimes you wonder where these organs are going, but they're going to people just like you and I. They're going to the school teacher that you sit in class with. They're going to a firefighter such as myself that responds to your home when you have an emergency. They're going to your pastor at church that preaches to you every Sunday. They're going to people that make a difference in someone's life. I was waiting in the hospital for six months for a heart. Um, my doctor told me after the fifth month that if I didn't get a heart soon, I would die. Luckily, we received a heart two weeks later. The heart that I received was from a gentleman named Danny. Danny is a person that I never met. He was 39 years old. He lived in Eureka, California. He was a youth pastor. He decided when he got his driver's license that he wanted to be a donor. And when he had children, two girls, he told them so they knew. If he hadn't registered to be a donor, I wouldn't be sitting here in this chair right now talking with you. At 19, you know, I received the diagnosis that um, I had keratoconus. And in layman's terms, it simply means that your cornea will eventually disintegrate and dissolve and look like a cone. Um, and so very quickly, um, my vision deteriorated to the point where I was legally blind. So at 26, I had my first cornea transplant in my right eye um, to restore my vision. And it was life-changing. The day after surgery, I was seeing 20 over 40. Life-changing. Without it, I would not have had a thriving research career. And so every day, I'm so thankful um, to my donors, and I try to make sure that I'm living each day to the fullest. I envision a future where everyone says yes to the donation opportunity. But I also realize that we as leaders must earn your trust. As a leader, it is important to me that every family is offered hope through organ and tissue donation. Hope after sometimes senseless tragedies. Hope when all hope is lost. I'm raised up in the urban community and 
we didn't know about donating, you know, uh, your heart, donating this, donating that. We, we didn't know. I just was saying and praying, Maurice gonna live. The phone rings, so I'm, I'm like, okay, man, Maurice must be doing good, and uh, he must be okay. So when I answered the phone, it was the doctor that had spoke to me about donating his organs. And um, I said, hello, I said, Maurice doing okay? And he said, no ma'am, your son died. And I said, huh? Your son died and he hung up. I wished I would have known more about organ tissue donation to carry something of his inside of you and it helped you to save somebody's life. Oh my God, that is heaven. That is, that is to the utmost power of living. Maurice could be in several people. My baby. I want to encourage you, encourage you to please think about, consider donating your organs, your loved one's organs, save lives. People say black lives matter. We say in the health field, black health matter. Black health does matter to keep a life going. Donate your tissue, donate your organs. I challenge you.